Hello and welcome to the stream. Today's free stream chatter was me doing a very slow and sort of bizarre um, version of the Tiny Toons theme. Okay, and the first thing I want to look at today, because um, I want to, we're actually going to go back to uh, looking into uh, Maxima. But first, I would like to point out that Natalie has said right here, I love you. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure she was talking to Titor. Um, but I love them both. I love them both as one would love two people that you don't know very much about. Okay. So enough of that bullshit. And we are going to go back to looking at Maxima. So at Maxima, we're talking about expressions. And I'm having trouble understanding this expression, so maybe we'll need to get back to this one. Um, so let's see what... I think I already have X defined, so let's... Uh, if I don't have X defined. If I do, I don't know how. Okay, so X colon 3 will set X equal to 3. But X colon 3 dollar sign, apparently... Ooh. Oh, we'll set x equal to 3, but a dollar sign means suppress the output. Um, so that's what they're doing here. So this is just going to be... Um, so this assigns x to... Oh, I see. So the first one assigns x to x plus 1, which is 4, and then x to 4 squared, which is 16. I get it. So multiple assignments, just like with... Um, are in order, just like with most programming languages, uh, every time you change x, it gets a new value. Now I get it. So this is an if-then-else if statement. Um, so this would be, we're setting y equal to x, set equal to 1. That's, that's an instruction. For i from 1 through 10, do x equal, this should give us 10 factorial. If I'm correct, what they're pointing out here, though, is this is just going to give us the value done. Uh, what we actually want for the answer is going to be y. Oh, x, because that's the thing we're multiplying. There we go. That's 10 factorial. Um, <coughs> and I guess what you can do there is add a, when you do this, you can also just right here return x instead of having to do it separately. And there we go. Okay, so dollar sign is suppress output. Semicolon is the normal way of ending. And you can, this is basically three commands separated with commas. Okay. Nouns and verbs. Um, that's complicated. So this says foo of x is x squared. This is a function. Um, but let me, let me try something here. Let's say I said foo of x equals x squared. What would that do? Okay, that's probably not what I wanted. Okay. So I said foo of y. This shouldn't work because I'm using the wrong kind of equal sign. What is y? Okay. I'm going to choose a value that isn't assigned. Foo of z equals z squared. This will not assign a function. Uh, so if I do foo of 5, 5, 5 won't work. I do have to do this set equal and then this will do this. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with nouns and verbs, but let's find out. Uh, foo of 42. Uh -huh. Oh, I guess that means don't expand it. That didn't help. Okay, what does this do? Okay, I'm confused now. What is nouns? Okay. Um, this looks difficult. We will ignore it. Identifiers! Um... These are just variables, pretty much. I think we can uh, safely 
and I guess they let you do a little bit more than Mathematica does, but that's not super useful. Inequality, alias, which is actually really useful because that means I could start using, um, that means I could start actually using aliases in Maxima to, to mimic uh, Mathematica. In fact, let's see if anyone's already done that. Uh, Maxima alias Mathematica. Um, well, unfortunately, the word maxima here has another meaning, so... Um, oh, Jesus Christ. This is going to be hard to search for. But the, the cool thing about the alias function, if I can find it again, uh, is that it apparently lets me um, use other names that might be more useful to me. Um, so aliases, I don't think they have any defined right now. I do not. Um, what the hell? Okay. Why is alias? Okay, that is, I guess, a function and variable for expression. Um, all but. Um, So it gives you everything but the two things that you, the, the two or more things that you, one or more thing you put in there. Args. Um, okay. Atom, if it's an atomic expression. Okay, I don't know why that's useful, but okay. Ta-da. Very ugly looking box, too. Um... So I guess the nice thing is you could do something like this, and it would be like Mathematica's hold function. Nope. Um, I guess, okay, so if you have box one, two, three, and added box five, four, five, six, I have no idea what the hell you're going to get. Okay. I guess it's kind of a hold, but not really a hold. I'm not really sure. Box char. Oh, so we could draw it with something other than quotation marks. Collapse, um, uh, several expressions together. So this is like what I think uh, Mathematica calls share. Copy, um, okay, so it makes a copy of it that doesn't change with the other one. Disolate, or de-isolate, um, display form. That's actually kind of interesting. So why don't you tell me what my form is of f? Okay. Do I? Ha I must have had f defined at some point. But all right, tell me what my form is of foo. You smart thing. Display form, not from. Okay, maybe that's not as useful as I think it is. Um, okay, X, oh, exponent isolate, let's see, um, this is some weird shit here, in flag, in part, isolate, wow. Okay, I'm not really seeing what this does. List constant variables. Well, okay. Um. Oh, I guess that's inside of an expression with dummy vars, which does make sense. Um. Okay, so this is just freaking confusing. And we're going to kind of skip through it fast because if something's really confusing, the faster you go through it, the more you understand it. Uh, let's see, part, partition, part switch, pick a part. Piece, p substring, 
or substitute whatever, reveal. Um, at this point, I'm kind of wondering how far along I am in this crappy manual. Probably not very. Yeah, <laughs> way at the beginning still. Um, okay. Substitute in part. This is good stuff, but I'm just... On order means... Okay. Operators. Okay, so this might be a little bit nicer. These are probably the things everybody already knows about. Um, right bit shift, left bit shift, arithmetic operators, good stuff. I'm looking for more list functions, which we maybe have already gotten through. Relational operators, less than, greater than, again, this is pretty standard stuff. Logical operators, and, not, and, or, pretty standard. Operators for equations. Okay. Oh, cool. The hash mark can be used for not equal. Um. Okay. Okay. Assignment. Okay, this is the colon kind of thing we were looking at earlier. Um. So if you don't have an array, it'll create one for you. Multiple assignment can be carried out in parallel. Assignment operator. Oh, it evaluates the left-hand side as well as the right-hand side. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Um, okay, so hang on. This is probably not useful. Oh, the macro operation. Okay. Um, print Q1X. Okay. Hmm. And the expression it returns is evaluated in the context from which the macro was called. Macro function is otherwise, so let's just pretend it is exactly the same as a regular function. So this is the thing that is a function that we were looking for. Um, and if you put it in brackets, it's a memoizing function in the sense that every time you call it, it remembers the value for the, for the arguments that you have called. And again, Mathematica has both of these concepts. Um, now, set equal to does not evaluate, whereas equal to always does evalu evaluate. Um, now, let me see something really quick here. Okay, so, let's see. Is a special case of a memoizing function, because you have the, um, whatever. Uh, you can define your own operators, which is nice. Match fix. As you can tell, I'm getting, didn't realize it was only this far along, so I'm getting kind of bored with this. Nary, no fix. Evaluation. The single quote operator prevents evaluation, so that's what it's there for. Um, yeah, unfortunately I get the feeling that I, I don't really want to go through all of this. Jesus freaking Christ. I mean, honestly, I don't even know how many of these things there are. Okay, so let's just do some, let's just have some fun with this now. We'll have some wacky fun. Okay, so this should just define this lovely variable here. Um, it is Pomodoro time. As always, we skip the first one. And let's go ahead and do a little plot of this, I think. Um, so actually, let's look at the plotting section. I think I've got, I mean, I know how to plot this, but maybe there's a better way of, um, of plotting a, a list. And let's not highlight all. Blah. Blah, 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 blah. So contour plot will plot a, um, a two-dimensional function. I guess these are in alphabetical order, which is not the best thing in the world. Um, implicit plot, okay, not what I care about. Julia, which for some reason is exciting to them, they like plotting the Julia function. It looks kind of shiny, but it's not really a make transform Mandelbrot set. Um, polar to XY, plot 2D, okay, hang on. 
Uh, let's see. X range. Expressions, function names, or a list with any of the forms. Um, okay. So this should work. X range. Uh, but we need to create an X range for this. So now, now there, do we have a range function? I ask, I don't, I don't know if we do. Um, ooh. Okay, that's, what does range do? Maybe nothing. Maybe you have to do this one three one meaning. Okay, not cool. All right, let's see what we can. What is the range function? Function range. Ooh, shiny. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Um. Okay, I mean that is that is kind of the range, but okay. Um. List functions. Okay. Wait. That's so I can get a list of the functions. That's not what I want, though. I want functions that apply to a list. But if you care, here are the functions. None. I haven't defined any user functions. Only the ones that Mathematica ma Maxima defines by itself. All right. Um. Uh, numbers. I guess over here we can go to lists, and we want to see how to create a list. Um, okay. Okay, those are very simple. Append, associate, cons. There's a way to create a list that's really nice. That is, there we go. Um, create a list by evaluating. So, okay, not quite what we need. Um... because there's no such thing as a range here. Now, I'm curious whether um, this thing has the concept of, like, 1.5. No. No, it, it doesn't have the concept of uh, a range using dots. That doesn't mean they don't exist. But So this would create a list if we knew we could just say x, but then we'd still have to list out the elements. Delete is not what we want for sure. Um, eighth, end cons. Fifth, first, first, and no, not quite. Fourth, join. Okay, nope. Last, last, and um, length, list, arith. Okay, I'll reduce. List P, make list. Here we go. Um. Okay, so that might be what we're looking for now. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So this maybe will create a list from 1 to 5. No, it does not. Did I do that wrong? I, I meant to do make list, not expression, sorry. Make list 5. Let's see what this does. Does it give you... Okay. That's okay. What does this do? Nope, still not the right thing. Ah, Okay. Make list expression n. Oh, so this should give me five copies of the number one. Okay, this should give me five copies of x. Um, okay, all right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, let me do a quick make sure that this is correct. The length is the. I'm sure it is. Yep, very nice. Okay, so... Uh, oh, nice. That's exactly what we need. So make list x goes from 1 to 100 in steps of 2 just as a test. No. Um, I guess expression has to be something useful. 
Um, make list concat xi. Okay, flatten. That's good. That works. That can be important. Um, list of elements when expression is this is I hard coded here? That can't be the correct thing. Yeah. Only symbols can be bound. What does that mean? Okay, can I do this? No. So I'm trying to use this form here. Expression, oh. Okay. Okay. Creates an empty list. Second form creates a list with expression as a single element, a list of n elements generated from expression. The most general form, which is this sucker, returns the list of elements obtained when ev evaluate expression i equals j Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. I get it. The i actually has to be a variable. So this is going to be make list x, where x goes from 1 to 10. That should give me that. Okay. And this, assuming everything works out correctly, should give me this. Okay. Um, so we'll call that we'll call that days. Actually, it's a much better name for it. Um, make list i, where i goes from one to length deaths. Okay. Okay. So now I should be able to do plot two D days deaths because that is the um, those are now both uh, lists okay not cool unless you want it it wants it like this I don't think that's right oh no no that's really bad all right let me see what plot 2d wants from me uh, let's see function Plot 2D. Okay. X range. Um. Okay. Oh. I actually have to be very specific and say discrete days deaths still no um oh hang on I guess it's got to be this this doesn't seem correct but of course it is um In GNU plot, you can rotate your plot, but I don't know how. Um, there's an undo. There's a way to get back out of this, and I don't remember what it is. Uh, is it Control Z? No. Anyway. Um, okay. 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 Yes. Don't. Don't do that. Um, okay. So I still get the feeling I'm not doing that quite the way they want, which is discrete list one, list two. I think I just sort of convinced it that I was correct. Um, is GNU plot still running? Yeah, it is. Let's kill that off. So I think what they actually want is this. The word discrete, days, death. And this doesn't work. Um, how about this? Discrete and then the two 
No. So it really does have to be three options. Okay. Not not really that fantastic. Um, but but it does work, so we need to put it we need to put it in here. Um Nope, I want this in there. And let's do this. God damn it. Um, sorry, Y log. Log Y? Yeah, and that treats the Y axis. Uh, the first few ones, by the way, can't really be plotted because this is one ugly looking graph. Um, but yeah, this is actually an accurate representation of how, see this big stump here, low it down, it looks like we're actually about to level off here. Um, so let's go ahead and get this in there as well, that's, that's important, this is a logarithmic plot. Um, log E, no, log Y. Uh, so that's sort of logarithmic plot. Um... I didn't see a differences operator for lists, which I wouldn't necessarily expect to see. But now let's see if I can actually create a function um, that does this. We'll call it differences of L set equal to <laughs> we'll call it list because it's easier, but make list list of um, right, so death is an array so I should be able to say like deaths 5 and deaths yeah there we go so this is going to be um, list of i so list of yeah list of i minus list of i minus 1 from i goes from 1 because hang on is this damn it these are one based arrays so the the number starts at one so this actually needs to be um, goes from two to the length of the list now if this works I will be fairly impressed so given a list this will create another list that is basically the differences of the first list if this works okay and if this works that's not too bad, actually. Let me make sure these numbers are coming in okay. I mean, they look fine, but... 95039. Yeah, looks good. By the way, notice the new number of deaths here is... Wow, it's jumping all over the place, isn't it? Um, now, another way to, to plot this... Um, I'll call this D-deaths because it's the... let me go ahead and push this to git real quick. Because um, it's, it's... I mean, it's the number of new deaths, but d-deaths for different differential uh, deaths. So we can do this. And now, let me even be clever here and reload this whole thing. I don't know if the plots are going to show up. They probably... I mean, they should. Um, Ooh, no, 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 no. Okay, if I could spell correctly, that would be good. Okay, so the, we probably do not want the plots showing up, so let's go ahead and... Oh, should there be two plots showing up? Uh, that's interesting. So anyway... Um... Something's wrong. Differences of list equals that. Oops. Gotta forget, not equal anymore. People are no longer equal. Right, let me go ahead and suppress. If I suppress this plot, will the other one show up? Let's find out. I wonder if plots cannot be suppressed. Because technically it's not output, it's just a plot. Okay, so now the most important part of any language, 
the comment structure because uh, that is makes life so much easier. Um, oh, nested, nice. Um, okay. So for right now, we can do. Actually, I'm curious. I'm gonna go ahead and um, kill this one, but leave this one. Oops, leave this one in here. See what happens. Let's do this. Okay, so apparently if there's more than one plot, only the last one's going to show up, which is probably correct. I mean, I, I'm not, it's not going to kill me. We really shouldn't be having plots showing up at all. Okay, so now can we do this again? And let's see, D-deaths. Awesome. Now I could try to do the same plot I did before, but one way to do this is... Um, hit me, Tito. Okay, we can do points of D-deaths. Now, this is just a graphical structure, and then I think, oh crap, I forgot what it was. It was like graphics 2D or something. Um, might have just been disp display. No. Okay, there is a function that lets you display graphical objects, so let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, draw a file. Is that draw default? Um, God damn it. Um, graphics, no. Oh, is it just draw? It is just draw. So, so if I do draw deaths, I don't think this is going to de death. This isn't going to work. It shouldn't work. Yep. But if I do this, also doesn't work. Okay, I was doing this yesterday, so. So somewhere in here, I had at one point how to do this. Is it just draw 2D? Yeah, it is just draw 2D. Um, and so let's make sure we get this. Now I want to see if we can do plot joined, uh, which is a mathematical way of saying um, we want the points joined together. Um, ooh. Okay, so that might not be possible, actually. Um, and unfortunately, that's really hard to see because, uh, let's see if we can zoom in on this part here. It's hard to see because these numbers are, so really it's doing like this. Wow, that's ugly. Um, okay, and now let's see if we can get, um, so that's actually not that interesting. Um, and we could also obviously do the same thing with, it's going to look uh, pretty much nicer because at least these things are increasing uh, like this. And that looks nicer because at least those numbers are increasing. Okay, so now um, the other things we did with Mathematica is can we create an interpolation function uh, that looks like a list uh, but um, but is defined at every point. Uh, so let's see if we can do that. Interpo interpolation package Okay, that's not necessarily what I'm looking for. Um, nope, not what I'm looking for. Interp I guess we probably need to do the interpolation package. That should be okay, right? Um, Pomodoro time, back in two and two.
And we are almost back. And we are back. So the interpolation, um, okay. Oh, okay. So let's see if Lagrange is already defined or if we need to do that. Uh, oh, it is. Okay. So maybe this is why the, uh, the manual is so long. It includes all of this stuff. I don't think we need to do load interpol. Lagrange, char fun two. Okay, no. Linear interpolation, not what I want. Would work though. Um, C-spline, rational interpolation, oh wow. It's not bad actually. But let's actually first start with linear interpolation. Um, and I guess the option, Okay, so let's see if we can do linear palation uh, interpol of this. Um, okay, that didn't really evaluate it at five. No, okay. Um, okay, so that should be okay to have points equal to just one. Um, Jesus Christ. All I want to do is interpolate. All I want to do is interpolate. Do I need to do a load interpol here for this? I mean, it looks like the function is already freaking defined. Let's see if we can do this. Linear interpolate points one, two, three, four. Uh, okay, fine. We can do f equals this. f of four. No, didn't work. Okay, so maybe we do have to do this magical um, load. I want to see what it does, though. Now. Oh. Okay. I, I thought it would be automatically loaded, but it's not. That's okay. We can we can certainly load it here. Not a problem. Uh, this might... I think this is when... Um, um, when Maximo was really old, uh, memory or space or whatever was a concern, so it didn't automatically load all of its packages. Okay, so let's go ahead and say f equals, um, so f of 3. Not cool, but I think maybe I have that up somehow. Okay, and I probably need to stop plotting that. Um, let's do this. Um... Okay. Uh, so f of x, I think I need to set equal to this. f of 5, that's not looking too good. Uh, and maybe it only works if, well, that would be terrible though. Okay, so I, the weird thing is here, char fun 2 does not appear to be defined, and it seems to be critical. Uh, to what we're doing here. So that might be the issue. But let me do this again. So F is it this? I don't think this is right though. No. Um I'm pretty sure I can't do this either. Yeah. So char fun two appears to be the um the really, really um necessary thing. Oh. Hmm. Okay. That should be false. 
That should be maybe true, yeah, okay. Okay. Alright, well, let's maybe see how linear interpolation is supposed to work. Um... And da -da 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 -da, Lagrange, I don't want the Lagrangian. I want linear interpol. Okay. Um, so this is kind of what I'm trying to do here. So let's just say linear interpol of deaths. Well, that's this sucker, and I want to say f of x set equal to that. And so f of 4.5 is not supposed to be that. And the only thing I can think of here is I've got to use um, I've got to use the memoization version which I don't want to do actually but um, let's see okay what is this doing here so linear interpolate, okay. So linear interpol. That's okay. And then f of x set equal to Oops, too many, too many, too many. Okay. Um Hmm. Why do I have to do it this way, though? Is it because this is automatically a function of x? Um, I mean, th this is ugly. I shouldn't have to ever use percentage at all if I don't want to. Uh, let's see if there's a better way of doing this. Okay, da -da 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 -da, load. Um. Ooh. Okay, so could I do this? Um. I think I tried this though. Uh, unfortunately, this might be just from previous. No. And the problem is the x is not a bound variable there. Um, but what if I do that? And then what is f equal to? Yeah, so that is not good. I mean, we could do it this way. But the idea here is whatever comes out of interpol. So this is, um, oh, you know what? We could do it this way, though. f of x equals, set equal to linear interpol. Uh, so this won't work. But this might work. No. Uh -huh. The problem is the x's on the two sides don't match. Because uh, the x on the right side is like a... Um I wonder if this will work. Nope. Alright, we're going to go ahead and do this, but we're going to make a note that we're unhappy about it. Um... Yeah, that's that's weird. Okay. All right, let's do this. Interpolation, interpolation deaths. Da, 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 da. At some point, we'll need a freaking spline anyway. So linear interpolation of death. Nope, nope, didn't mean to do that. Okay. And now, what is the hell is this um, tut tut percentage thing? Hmm.
So what if I do this? What if I do Nope. Um I guess the problem is that char fun too. That should that should work though. Uh this we know didn't work. Um, what the hell does this do? Okay, I think we saw it did do something. So linear. Let's go ahead and make our lives easier by doing this. Okay. Can't apply it to a function directly. Um, okay. So now if I say f is equal to this, Oh, I think I need to clear F, though. And I don't think there is such a thing as this isn't going to do anything. All right. So I need to get rid of that. Let me get, go ahead and get rid of that real quick. Wait. Uh, yeah, this thing here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and push this to Git because it has been a tenth of a second and I am paranoid. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. No, 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 no. All right, so we have here linear interpol of call it one, two, three, four. Very simple linear in interpolation, obviously. Um, I cannot apply that to a number. It doesn't like that. Um, if I put two of these thingies in front of it, doesn't really seem to do anything. What if I do eval? I don't that. Boy, shouldn't work either. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. Now, suppose I say f is equal to this. And then what is f? And this can't do anything because f is not a function to begin with. Okay, uh, so can I do... This shouldn't work either. Yep. Uh, this is not the correct way of doing things. And so this would be set equal. This is how you're supposed to do things. It's not going to work, though, because for some reason it doesn't like this. Um, no. Okay. So we can do this, but it's very ugly. Um, Actually, we don't want a linear. Let's get a cubic. Let's get a spline interpolation if we're going to do this. Um, um, and I don't need a Lagrangian. I want a. I think we'll just use a C spline. Um, okay. Um, oh, C spline is cubic spline, so I think I'm okay with that. Can we go higher degree spines if we needed them? Rational interpolator. That could work, actually. Um, but let's use a C spline. Okay. I need to figure out a way to um, unrationalize numbers. Um, In 
interesting. Um, I don't know if this is going to work, but... Oh, is it plot 2D? Um, okay, hang on. Nice. It hasn't done anything yet, but the theory here is that at least accepts that as syntax. And there's a nice cubicle spline uh, of the plot. Um, now, theory. And now here's one with a. Woo! No options allowed after plot 2D, huh? Um. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that a dot? That I have to do that comma. Dun dun dun. That's a little bit slow in the sense of very slow. Um. Oh, because we have this weird interpolation going on here. This does not look good. Let's see if we can just cut it from the point where we. Uh, nope. Let's not right here. Nope. Got to do something about the GNU plot working badly, but okay. Let's go ahead and make that a. Um, so let's see. We had f of x. Um, let's see. Okay. So we did c spline of deaths and. Then we had to do f of x for some reason equals this. Well, I guess we'll call it uh, int deaths. Um, I think we'll call it f deaths. Um, I don't know why we have to do this. This is very strange. And then, just to show that we can do it, uh, we can do, oh, actually, we can do better than that. Oh yeah, logi, not y log. So very very slow, but it is doable. So we will put it here in the list of plots that work. God damn it! Yeah, and there is a, there is a slight problem there, but uh, we we will deal with that. Okay, now. So this is the floating point approximation of the, de of the deaths. Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we are almost back. And we're back. 
Okay. Uh, so the next question we might want to ask is, can we save plots instead of having to um, you know, export them or do whatever it is we want to do with them? So we will just call this... Uh, this plot here, P1. And the idea here is we're going to load this and it's not going to actually display anything. And that didn't work. Okay. Now, let's see if it, we can not have it display anything. Nope, still didn't work. Okay. Um, so I was hoping to save the plot to a file somewhere uh, instead of having it be displayed. Um, so there should be a way to do that, actually. Um, ooh, shiny. Oh, okay, hang on. Um, I guess file input and output would be the next thing, but, um, contour, uh, oh, load, okay, hang on. Um, okay. Julia. Plot 2D. And the question we're asking now is, can we export this to a file, like a PNG file? Although PNG may not have existed when Maxima started out. But something. We can we could still plot it somewhere. Plot options, remove plot option, plotting options, adapt depth, wow, a lot of options. Oh, okay. Color bar, color bar ticks, elevation. This is some good stuff here. Ooh, okay, hang on. Plot real part, and here we are, PNG file. Uh, saves the plot into a P it with the file name, it, rather than showing it on the screen. Um, okay. I guess this is the weird part here, because it's not really a ping file, it's a plot, if I'm understanding this correctly. So, and again, this is bad because I can't kind of suppress it from being created if I assign it to a variable, so I've got to go sort of directly, um, and I guess the file name will be test1.png. Let's see what that does. Still showing it, not good. Um... Okay, that's not good either. And then let's say, let's call this temp test1.png. Not good, still showing up. Nope. Okay, let's see what we're doing wrong here. Plot 2D, da da da, this looks like. Um, okay, look at an example here. Things rather than showing them on the screen. So I guess we need to figure out how these things actually look. Um, okay. Something tells me I'm doing something a little bit wrong here. Um, box, azimuth, axes. Okay, um, these are plotting options. Oh, 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 oh. Um, Okay, that actually makes more sense. So these are not actually functions. These are, although for some reason that worked, uh, these are options. So this would be um, plot2d, 
this and then logi and that, that's one of the options and the other option here would be um, um, okay so what is this just literally PNG file Um, oh, or is this, because it's an option, is this just other names for the option? Oh, I think there's just other names for the, the option. Uh, I think that's right. <laughs> um, let's just try it with, um, file equals temp test 2.png so that does hmm that didn't work well actually let's go ahead and um Go ahead and try it from the um, let's go ahead and try it from the uh, the command line okay so this should be fine good and now apparently we can do something like file name equals temp foo dot ping um, or can we? Accepting the found... Oh! This cannot be right. Um... Expecting a symbol for the option name. So were you expecting... This new. No. What is? Hopefully, I haven't misdefined. Oh, I have defined file name now. That's terrible. Um. So if I do this, is this good? This is probably not going to work either. Hmm. I don't think this is going to do what I want. I think it's going to be this. File name colon empty string. Okay, what does this do? God damn it. All right, we probably need to see how to look at uh, how to uh, set options. Um up here a little bit set plot options is one way to do it okay well that's actually not too bad um, so you could set the plot options before you do the plotting you don't even have to um, you don't even have to put it as part of the plot not great but you know let's we can live with it so set plot option Am I? I think I am. This thing is going off the. Oh, there we go. And then we'll move this one up just a little bit to comply. All right. So set plot option would be um, ping file. I think this is what they. Ooh. Um. Is it this? Yeah, I have no idea what the hell that does. So now if I do this... Uh, this. 
Hey, 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 hey. So let's make sure we don't forget this. Um, so this kind of ugly. Um, we'll print this out to um, and for testing we'll call it 1652 because that's the current time in Albuquerque about uh, 2252 in Greenwich alright see what this does it should not show us that oh <sighs> oh no no oops this has to end like this Die, Baxma. Okay. Okay, good. We do not have anything printed out. And now... Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, and gitify this. And um, so we can save. Pl now, the question is could I have put this uh, plot option like, could I have done this? And I get the feeling it could have. Uh, let's see what that does. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, okay. Alright, so now I get it. The plot options are, you can put them at the end, or you can do set plot option. So, very nice. We could do that. Let's see what else we have for plot options. That was pretty exciting, actually. Um... So ping PDF. I, I'm surprised. I guess they added stuff to it, obviously, since uh, since the beginning of time. Plot format. Da, 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 palette. Nice. Uh, PS file run viewer. Same X Y. Same X Y Z style. Okay. Oh, SVG. That's really nice. Um. Uh, let's see, x, x, tix, x, x, y, scale, y, 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 tix, y, x, uh, ratio, which I guess if it's 1, it's the same as same x, y. Okay, so that's pretty damn cool. Um, so now, the question is, can we do a linear fit of the deaths to a, um, I guess, I, I guess we should create a function called log deaths, uh, a list called log deaths. Um... Now the question is, um, I don't think this will work. Um, oh, well, well, well. Um, can I say deaths plus one and get the, oh, nice. Can I do this then? Very nice. So I can do that. Um, so there's not a problem taking log deaths, it's just that I gotta get rid of the zeros first. So now we can use one of those, um, selection functions that say, give me the portions of death that are not zero, and logify them. It's technically a bit of a cheat, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Um, so it's kind of bad here, introduction to lists. And then we have, see, this is the functions and variables for list. I kind of wish they were in their own section. Associate, cons, copy list, create list. Ooh. Ooh. Um. 
Now the problem here is whether or not this deletes and returns something or it actually modifies the original. Um, moves from expression tr to that are equal, so z delete zeros from deaths. And now let's see if that actually affected deaths itself. It shouldn't have. I mean, I hope it doesn't. Um, okay, good. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. At some point, we're gonna need the 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 uh, numeric. So this is just gonna be this. Um, I mean that that's actually kind of cool, but um, so now we need the function that says sort of numericize. Um, is there called numeric function? Numerical. Uh, hang on. No, I'm not sure I want that. Evaluation. Um, so what does a double one of those things do? Um, aha! Modifies evaluations of input expressions applied to the general expression, cause the value of x be substituted for expression in the input expression. Um, okay. Modifies evaluation in input expressions. Apply to the operator. Okay, so expand. It'd be useful if I knew what the underscore actually did. Um, okay. Um, causes the value of expression to be substituted for the expression itself. Brother. Okay. Uh, we're going to go back to linear interpolate because we're just doing something really simple now. Okay. Good stuff. Now this might be the thing I need. Aha! So if I said here f of x uh, equal to this. Okay, so let me take a look at that in just a second. Pomodoro time back in two and two. And we're almost back. And we're back. Okay, so it looks like um, I didn't have to do it in two steps like I did here, which is good because this is really ugly. 
I could have just done it. Uh, in a single swoop. Um, let's see. Um, so it's set equal to this won't work, but Sorry, this won't work, but this may work. So let's see what that does. Now I get the feeling if I just say F death, it's not going to give me. I think if I say fun info, you know what is it? Fun. Fun def. Cool. And now if I say F deaths of four, uh, there we go. Or I should say seventeen. Or Now, in theory, I should be able to differentiate f deaths uh, because it is a continuous function um, and get something that's basic. Well, this is a this is a cubic spline, so uh, I would get a square. I would get a second order differentiation. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so we have this, we have that. Uh, we figured out how to do this. Are we somewhere interesting in the in the um Okay. So we did figure out what this, the quote quote operator was. We were looking for something. Oh. I'm wondering if ev would have worked too, evaluate would have worked. But that's okay. Okay. Um so now the next thing we want to do is look for uh, linear fitting of uh, lists to polynomials or actually any anything at all because it, it is a linear combination. We should be able to do it precisely. Do we still have the days going around? Yeah, baby. Um, all right, so now we're going to try to do some... Oh, I think the next one was can we get numerical values um, for things like, um, this guy. Okay. So, operators, evaluation. Okay, I think we, okay, this is where we were. We were looking for change to numerical value or numerical approximation. Eval, eval, e flag, f evaluate function. No eval nouns, predicate, okay. Simplification is the heart of, okay. I don't think that's the same as, um, this is really nice. I don't even think mathematical that you define um, asymmetric functions. Um, it, doesn't let you, it doesn't let you use functions quite like, I don't know if that's true, but I don't think you can use functions quite the way they're being used here. Commutative. De mauve. Um, um, oh, okay, so that's just a single one off as opposed to distribution, distribute over, um, expand. Uh, these are technically what I'm looking for is not a simplification, it is a um, approximation. Um, uh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Uh, okay, here we go. And, oh, wait, 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 that wasn't supposed to happen. What is sign one? So if I do this, Okay, that's not what I was looking for. Um, so wait. So 
Okay, so this is not doing what I want. This is just coincidentally I happen to find something. Symmetric x through uh, functions for numbers. Um, approximate value. Um, um, okay, that's not what I'm looking for. Numerical value. Okay, so this may just, hopefully this will give us the very easy thing that I need, uh, which is, nope, which is just the, what Mathematica calls the capital N function. Okay, approximation. <sighs> Definite integral, integrate. Um, Okay, 16 of 2018, 19, 20, uh-huh, 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 doesn't take forever. Um, all right, we might have to go to Google here. Maxima give approximate value. Close enough. Um, so this might be... Oh, okay, so it's float is apparently the magic function here. Aha! Okay. So, if I do float, that's not bad. Um, or actually, let me do this. Uh, L deaths is the logarithm, and this is actually a lot more useful. So we will say float of L deaths. And we'll just make a note of it here. I don't even know if we want to do anything with it. Um, we're just going to point out that um, float is like N. Okay, so now we've learned a few things, but now the question is, can we curve fit with, with deaths? Um, <coughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So, fitting is actually a um, uh, oh L squares. Okay, that's a trivariate sample. There's only three matches, but something tells me that oh linear regression. Okay, that's good. Let's see if we can do... Oh, jeez. Quite a bit of stuff here. Um, take inference? Solve? Okay, introduction. Linear recurrences with... That's not what I want, though. Um, all right. There's a name... F there's function fitting, but that's the only name I know for it. Um... Um, linear combination? Okay. Uh, that's not, though, what I'm talking about. Uh, no. Um, okay. Let's go over here and look at the numerical, um, fast Fourier transform. No. Limits differentiation and integration integration. Uh, da 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 da. Number theory, symmetries. This is a lot of good stuff in here. Function definition, program flow. Um, 
curve fitting, I guess, is the is the term of art, which they don't have here. Um, let's see, what am I saying? Fit, approximate. Um, this this all falls under the general concept of numerical math. Um, Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is actually the Horner polynomial. Find root's not bad. That's actually a fairly useful function. It finds the... Newton is another way to find the root of something. Solutions of numerical equations minimize error is what we're looking... Oh, I guess that's least squares error is what we're talking about here. Um, all right. I think I saw something called L squares. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go. All right. That's what we're looking for. Do I need to packageify it? Okay. Aha, uh -huh, here we go. Estimate parameters A to best fit equation E in the variables X and E and A to the data D as determined by the method. I I think that is more complicated. Okay, we do need to do this, and I'm not going to cheat this time. And well, we'll go ahead and put a semicolon because I want to see it say that it's been loaded. Um, so, da da. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, okay, so this is. Um, so this is a little bit, um, um, L squares. I think we can do this one approximately exactly because this is a, uh, but let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, so let's see, L squares estimate matrix MSC. Wait. Um, uh, returns the mean square. Oh, well, that's not very interesting. Let's see what this does here. And uh, least squares estimate. Um, of. Um, D must be a matrix, but I think a list is a matrix, I'm pretending. And then. Um, the variable is going to be x. Um, do we need that? In a, I'll just do this. x. And I'm going to say a plus b times x plus c times x squared plus d times x cubed. And then I want the solve for a, b, c, and d. Let's see what that does. Um, oh, I do need to load L squares. Um, let's see. Argument cannot be a symbol found X. So do I have to do that? Uh, wrong number of indices found one comma one. Um, so it doesn't automatically assume 
that um, that death is a one-dimensional array. Oh, actually, hang on. Can I do this? Just an array with one thing in it? Um, no, I think I've got to do... So what I probably need to do is day's deaths. Um, I think I need to transpose that. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. Um, okay. And I think I actually need the transpose of this guy. That still doesn't look correct. Do I? Did I have that in too deep or something? Let's see. This is a matrix with one, two rows. Hmm. Well, let's try this with a transpose, but I'm getting the feeling this isn't going to work now. Whoa! That's not expected. Okay. Okay. That's that's not cool. Um, let's see. So by the way, we at some point we also need to worry about variable names that themselves because I don't necessarily want to be typing this out, I want to be able to type out like A1 plus A2 plus A3 um, instead of having to give, you know, letter names to everything. Um, so I mean, what it really wants is the um, the table, which I think we can do with make, make table, make list. Um, Uh, it'll be like deaths, no, days I, deaths I, where I goes from one to length deaths. I think this is what it wants. Uh, let's take a look. This should be like, oops. Oh, that was actually pretty nice. And then I should be able to do that percentage and say, here's my, um, Oh. Oh, that's bad. Hang on. Yeah, that's just percentage by itself. Ooh. All right, Pomodoro time. Back in two and two.
Okay, we are almost back. And we're back. So when in doubt, let's see. Estimate parameters A to best fit the equation E in the variables X. Um, okay, good. Each row is one datum. And each column, hmm. I guess the only thing you can think of is it's not a matrix somehow. Um, I mean, this should not do what I think it'll do. This should not work. Um, Subscript much must be in there. So how do we work the matrix command? It's not going to tell us though, is it matrix? Um, is there a type of command? Let's see, so what, what is this? Uh, make list, okay. Type of, I don't think that's going to work. Um, type maybe? Okay. So I think that would be a matrix, but maybe you need some special matrix magic um, to turn it into a matrix. Okay. So that could actually just be matrix days deaths. Ooh, shiny. I think. Column 78, column 102, I think that's correct. Um, so now, if we go back over here, matrix days deaths, shiny, what the hell? Uh, dependent equations eliminated three and four. Um, That is not what I expected. But it is closer to what I wanted. Okay. Oh. Oh, no, that's terrible. Oh, sorry, that's not what I'm doing either. Hang on. Let me copy this from over here. Um. There we go. So we have matrix days death eliminated. All right, that I think we can probably fix. Let's see. Let's just say, uh, what happens if I replace those with just X? Nope, it really does need to be that. Where X is the variable. Let's see what it does if I do this. Dependent equations eliminated. Oh, okay, hang on. That is not a great estimate to my data. Now, let me try this. Now I'm just kind of shooting in the dark. Yeah. Um... That does not seem to be correct. What if I do it in just one variable? How about, now this is going to complete, oh. Okay, still not quite what we need. Let's go back to the example. Um, okay, can I use back arrow with, um, with the uh, 
the A name tags, I guess. Alrighty. Uh, least squares estimate, okay. Each row is one datum. And each column contains the values of one variable. So, um, okay. Let's take a quick look at this. Okay, so each. Okay, so this is kind of weird because we only have, we don't have the right number of variables. So I think what I really wanted was three rows, two columns per row. Now ah, we're cooking. Um, let's call this x oh, oh, equals, equals is like this. Okay. Now. Hmm. Dependent equation eliminated. So some oh, actually that that one that one is this is times x squared. Okay. So something's still not quite right. Um Okay, so here's our matrix. Um, oh, nice. So this is actually a little bit more powerful than I thought. Um, so this is actually, we're going to say that um, y is equal to the, there we go. Oh, right, because X and Y are, are uh, input and output. Aha, here we go. Um, so Y is equal to 1 plus... Yeah, that's actually correct. So now... So now the question is... Well, first of all, let's see if matrix days deaths is... Um, Uh, each row is supposed to be one, one, um, yeah, this is not right. It's going to be the transpose of this. There we go. One goes to zero, da 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 da, da. Let's get this in here. Now I think we're, now I think we're in business. We in business. Okay. And so what we want, this is actually nicer than the one Mathematica has. Um, take the transpose, and we want y to be equal to a, you know, combination of nice. Um, okay. So what this says basically here is um, 14,041 plus b times x plus c times x squared is going to equal um, uh, is going to equal uh, the number of deaths. So that's not bad actually. Um, I mean I'm not saying that's not a bad number of deaths. That's okay so now we want to plot 2D and uh, this number plus this number, which is a negative number, times x plus this number times x squared, with x going from 1 to the length of deaths. And that should roughly approximate it won't really, by the way, uh, the uh, the number of deaths. Oh, semicolon. Okay. 
And now, if I can do this right, I should be able to plot more than one function. And so here, I might be able to plot f deaths x as well. Um, um, okay, no, I can't do that. Maybe it's just parentheses? That doesn't make sense, though. If I want to... that... this should probably not work. So it probably will. Okay. Um, so now we know how to get approximations, and this is, like, really, really nice, because we don't even have to... if we want to do it with logarithms, for example, so if we wanted to do... Um, What is, what is L deaths? Shouldn't that be... Oh, shit. Um, I get the feeling this will not work. Um, because it needs more than one, uh, one element. Um, X, Y, Y, da, da, da. Um, so all we need there basically is a, is a shorter list of, of days um, because the um, because the number of days for which the log of deaths is defined is smaller than the number of days for which deaths is defined okay so the next real question would be um, Um, okay, let's see, the next uh, order of business be to see how long I am been streaming for about an hour 48 minutes, I think that's enough for now. Uh, thank you for watching, and we will pick this up next time, probably not today though.